Welcome back. So as promised, I talked about this last night. Uh, it is time to talk about the Philadelphia Flyers. So the Flyers are a team that looked like they were in pretty good shape to make the playoffs. There was a video I made a couple months back talking about the playoff picture in the East. I left the Flyers off, not because they were out of the picture, but because I felt like they weren't in any danger of missing the playoffs. And when we look at the left column here, which is games before these ones, uh, you can see why things look pretty good for Philadelphia. Not necessarily great, not sure to expect anything in the playoffs, but playoffs, sure. So from October 10th to November 9th, the team went 5-7-1. and one. They had a decent start. They fell off a bit. They scored 2.92 goals per game. They allowed 3.15 goals against per game. One storyline that has not changed during the season much at all is their power play sucks. 8.9% uh, during that time until November 9th. Their penalty kill has been pretty good, though. 79.5%, uh, at least until lately. From November 10th to December 9th, they went 10-3-1. Good run for them. Scoring 3.07 goals per game, uh, allowing 2.29 goals against per game, 15.8% on the power play, which is one of the better numbers on the board. Still not very good. Uh, penalty kill, 91.7%. So again, 10-3-1, things look good. Uh, from December 10th until January 9th, they go 5-4-4. Four, and four. So because of the point system we have in the NHL, that is one game one game above 500, one, one game above, and I know people don't like it when you say 500, but 500 in the NHL's case is just the points percentage. So they are one game above 500 that way. 2.54 goals scored per game, allowing 2.92 goals against per game. So trending in the wrong direction, but still goals against below three. 8.5% uh, on the power play, which sucks. 86.1% uh, on the penalty kill. So I do wonder, like with the Flyers, how much their lack of a power play has cost them games, which has cost them, I think, a chance at a playoff spot. Even with all the losing they have here, if you have a power play early in the season, you win some of those games. There, I know from reviews, I would say the power play, special teams cost them, special teams cost them, and it's always the power play that was doing it. January 10th until February 9th, not bad, 7-5. and 2.92 uh, goals scored per game, allowing 3.08 goals against per game. 21.2% on the power play, easily the best number on the board, uh, allowing uh, not very many on the penalty kill either. 83.9% on the penalty kill. So right here, January 10th till February 9th, might have been their, their strongest argument for, hey, these guys could be a playoff team. Even though 10, 3, and 1 is better than 7 and 5, even though they were allowing a little more than they were scoring, they still won 7 out of 12, and their special teams weren't hurting them. Uh, that changes. February 10th to March the 9th, they go 6, 5, and 2. They score an even 3 goals per game during that period, uh, allowing 3.31 goals against. Power play, 11.9%, so it goes right back to struggling. And I remember, they picked up Drysdale. It looked like that was going to be a big turnaround, and it just it, it didn't last. Their penalty kill during that time, 84.1%. So still, the penalty kill, very, very good. That has changed over the last month. From March the 10th until April the 9th. So this lined up nicely where it's basically six months of data. 3-8-3 uh, and three has been their record over the last month. 2.64 goals scored per game, which isn't as bad as it's been. 2.54 is the worst it's been in any given month. But their goals against have just ballooned out of control. 4.57 goals against per game which is more than a goal more allowed than any previous month. But they'd been trending in the wrong direction. From February 10th to March the 9th, you could see the goals against were starting to go up. 9.8% on the power play. They're back into single digits. It's not good. Uh, every review, I'm like, Philly power play, does it suck? Yep, it's not very good. And, and I, I don't have anywhere else to go with it. Uh, their penalty kill has sunk as well, 74.2%, which makes sense because the defense and the goaltending, which has been putting in so much work this season, it's just, it's it's all falling apart. So we'll go through the happy column. Uh, away from home, they win in Florida 2-1. to one, And this was, I thought, a huge win for them. Uh, goals from Paling and Hathaway, Erson saved 29 out of 30. So they get a really good game out of Erson. Uh, they win a huge game in Florida. Uh, then they lost 7-0 against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay starting their run. Uh, Erson saved 11 out of 15. Sandstrom saved 8 out of 11. But did they bounce back? Yeah, it's San Jose, but they win at home 3-2. Goals from Farabee, Frost, and Tippett. Erson saved 27 out of 29. So that's two quality starts for Erson out of three. Not too shabby. 
Uh, but then they lose 6-2 to two at home against the Toronto Maple Leafs. The asterisks, of course, are for teams outside of the, or in the playoffs. Uh, the teams without an asterisk are not playoff teams. What's interesting is they had a better record during this really rough stretch uh, when you look at the teams they're playing than they've had where these are winnable games and they've been finding ways not to win them. So they lose that one 6-2 to two against Toronto. Goals from Tippett and Forrester. Erson San- saves 9 out of 12. Sandstrom saves 12 out of 15. Uh, then away from home, they lose 6-5 to five against the Bruins. Goals, two from Farabee, Paling, Frost, and Delorier also get goals. Sandstrom saved 24 out of 30. I believe that was the one where, you know, there was the question about Sandstrom and you just throw your arms up. and uh, At any rate, yeah, uh, but they, they lose that one 6-5. to five, But again, they're competitive, right? They get five goals against Boston, not too shabby. Uh, then they won at home against the Toronto Maple Leafs, 4-3. Uh, goals from Tippett, Sanheim, Frost, and Lawton. Arison saves 27 out of 30. So you get a bounce back game from Arison. You get a win against a playoff team. And you, you help, you know, make things a little better after losing back-to-backs. So that's three wins out of six. Then in Carolina, they lost in overtime, three to two. So respectable result again. Uh, Lawton and Konechny with the assists, and, or with the goals, I should say. And Arison, 30 saves on 33 shots. So not bad. Uh, The overall numbers, not bad either when they played against Boston again. They beat Boston this time 3-2. Two Two goals from Konechny. They get a goal from Forrester as well. Uh, Arison saved 18 out of 20. So another quality start for Arison. And this column here, they're 4-3-1. So again, if you go 4-3-1 in this column, we're having a whole different conversation, aren't we? We're talking about, hey, Flyers are in the playoffs, all that fun stuff. And when you looked at the schedule after this run, it looked a lot easier. So yeah, Philadelphia should be there, but don't overestimate the Flyers apparently. So it starts with a loss at home against Florida 4 to 1. Makes sense. Florida lost that one 2 to 1. They don't want to lose again. They go into Philly and beat them. Uh, Bobby Brink with the goal, Sandstrom 11 saves on 14 shots. So in that game, Philadelphia did a really good job of limiting chances against. Uh Sandstrom had a bit of a rough night there, but again, right? You you limit chances against it is Florida. They're they're a team that could very well find themselves in the mix for a Stanley Cup in June. And then uh, away from home an overtime loss, six to five against the New York Rangers. Respectable again. Why? Well, it's the Rangers, right? The, the hottest team in the league. Uh, goals from Lawton, Paling, Konechny, Tippett, and Forrester. Arison twenty one saves on twenty seven shots, and that does stand out, right? You you probably want a couple of saves you don't get in that game. And that starts to become more and more of a storyline as this drags on. Uh, then the most concerning one is probably that loss in Montreal 4-1. to Now Montreal's capable of winning their share of games. Montreal's a respectable team at this point. Tippett with the goal in that one. Arison saves 13 out of 15. So two of those goals are empty netters. But where it stood out to me is this is a team that needed a win. They know they're in the hunt for a playoff spot. They go into Montreal and they just they, they lose. And so that was concerning. And then they come home. And this this getting booed by their own fans, I, I don't blame them. They lose to Chicago 5-1. to one. Forrester has the only goal in that one. Erson, disappointing night for him. 19 saves on 24 shots. But when you lose 5-1 to one against Chicago, there's some blame to go around. I think it's easy to blame the goaltenders. I'm not saying the goaltenders don't deserve some blame for this run. But there is some blame to go around. I don't think the blue line's been playing particularly well. I, I would throw out there, Sanheim had an amazing start to the season. I think his play's fallen off a bit over the over the second half. He's got some company, but he's one that, to me, kind of stands out. Uh, then, again at home, they have an overtime loss against the New York Islanders. That one's a 4-3 to three loss. Cates, Sanheim, and Frost with the goals in that one. Erson saved 4-6. to six. He gets pulled. Fedotov goes in, 19 saves on 21 shots. I want to talk about Fedotov for a bit, and we're going to talk about him over here as well. Fedotov has gone from uh, playing in the KHL to playing in the NHL very, very quickly. Um, his English, not perfect. Uh, you're you're looking at, he's, it's a different ice surface, it's a different league, it's a different language, it's a different culture. I think where, where Philadelphia, you know, brings him in, and, and I, I, I absolutely applaud him for coming in and playing for them, but that's got to be tough. You're you've now moved halfway around the world, and you're in a playoff chase, and you're against players that you may not be familiar with, uh, teams you're not familiar with, 
and it's got to be hard. So I don't think we have enough information on Fedotov right now because I've seen people saying, well, he's not very good. Okay, but it's it's everything's different when you go over to North America and you've been playing in the KHL. So to me, I think Fedotov needed some time playing for the Phantoms and get used to it. But because of Philadelphia being in this kind of we don't trust Sandstrom situation, which is how this looks, uh, Fedotov ends up being the backup goaltender, right? I don't think they trust Sandstrom. I'm not sure they trust Arison at this point right now either, but what are you going to do? So then away from home, they lose 4-2 to two against Buffalo. Again, you need this win and you don't get it. Uh, Cates and Tippett with the with the goals in that one. Fedotov saved 15 out of 19. Um and again, you're you're playing in Buffalo. I'm sure you look around going, these seats, there's a lot of empty seats. And uh, this this team's actually pretty good that we're against. What's going on here? Buffalo can can light you up a little bit. Uh, then away from home, they lose 6-2 to two against Columbus. And this is just the absolute, you know, epitome of, of just rolling out of the playoffs. Just skyrocketing in the wrong direction. Um, so Lixell and Jenning both had their first NHL goals in that game. Uh, Erson saved 27 out of 33. So rough night for Erson. All six goals for Columbus that night were from defensemen. That's a first in that, that franchise's 25-year uh, 20, history, uh, almost 25-year history. And so here we are. You know, they're, they're having their troubles. Last night, they need a win against Montreal and 9-3 win for Montreal. This is, again, like I say, skyrocketing in the wrong direction. I just picture like a rocket on a launch pad Face in the ground. Uh, Paling, Faraby, and Johnson with the goals. Uh, Faraby, uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, Paling, I think, was credited with two goals. One of those has been changed to Eric Johnson. Uh, Erson saved 12 out of 17, and then uh, Fedotov saved 9 out of 13. So it's been tough. It's been very, very tough. Uh, Konechny is their leading scorer in 73 games, 31 goals, 34 to 65 points. I like Konechny. One thing I do wonder with Philadelphia is, do they have a you know, franchise forward in their ranks right now. And I, I I don't think they generally do. I don't think they have like that one big go-to guy. Uh, Tippett's been very good. 75 games, 28 goals, 25 assists, 53 points. But these are both good top six forwards. This is a team that before the season started, they were not expected to be a playoff team. Uh, to me, two stand out as having had their share of struggles this year. Frost, 68 games, 13 goals, 28 assists, 41 points. Is this Frost's last year in Philadelphia? Will we see him ask for a trade? Will we see them shop him around? I think he probably does get moved. He's young enough that he can bounce back somewhere else. I don't think it works for him in Philly. Uh, I've been wrong before. I said that with Hoaglander too, so you just never know. Uh, Couturier, 71 games, 11 goals, 25 assists, 36 points. I'm aware of Hoaglander's in Vancouver. and just It comes into my brain. But Couturier's 11 goals in 71 games isn't that upsetting. I, I think the, the upsetting part with Couturier is to start the season, those first 20 games, he looked fantastic. But it's a long schedule, and Couturier had a lot of time off. And so the, the grueling schedule that we're looking at, uh, it's, it's tough. I think Couturier can have a bounce back next season. I do wonder with him being a healthy scratch here and there, I I, I do wonder if there's been a, a fracture in that relationship between uh, player and team. Keeping in mind, of course, that John Tortorella is quite transparent with the players. Uh, management in general is quite transparent with the players. Uh, the problem with that, that argument and that message is uh, Couturier not understanding why he wasn't in the lineup and what we need more from you means. So I, for me, with Couturier, I think they're looking for more defensive intensity. So if he's not scoring, that's fine. But they're, they're looking for him to be that two-way forward he was uh, when he was in the Selkie conversation. And that's, that's what they're looking for from him. The goaltending has been concerning. Arison, 21-18-7 with an 886 save percentage. He wasn't supposed to be the starter. Obviously, that was Carter Hart. Uh, Carter Hart, due to legal issues, not with the team. 12, 9, and 3, 906 save percentage. We are not here to discuss the legal issues around this. Just that it was it was something that at the time it took place. I don't think Hart was playing fantastic, but was he playing well enough for a starter? Yeah, probably. And in the event that he was with the team now, would they be outside of the playoffs? There's no way to know. There are definitely some people who didn't like his game and some people who did. But either way, they are where they are. 
Cal Peterson, 2-2 two two record, but an 864 safe percentage, and he was not good in his last game either. Really, really not good in that game. Uh, Sandstrom, 1-2 record this year with an 823 safe percentage. And obviously for Sandstrom, I, I just I don't feel like uh, Philadelphia is going to be bringing him back next year. I, I think there'll be a change in goal. Fedotov, there's been discussions of them having an extension with him. I haven't seen one signed yet. 0-1 and one with an 811 save percentage. And again, it's it's easy to dump on the guy, but he just he just arrived in North America. And as I said earlier, I really feel like it would have made more sense to put him with the Phantoms, have him get some starts with the Phantoms, get used to the North American game, the style of play, and have your coaching staff work with him on things as well. Because it's easy to to have your scouting and looking at a guy from a distance kind of thing. It's a little different when they're when they're playing in the National Hockey League or they're they're dealing with North American ice and all this. So um not trying to say that, you know, Fedotov's gonna be a star goaltender, but I, I don't think this has been a fair assessment of him. And I would be very surprised if they don't at least give him a one year extension. I'd say a one year extension at eight hundred thousand dollars, somewhere in that region, would make a lot of sense. Uh but hopefully he gets a clean slate and gets to start this fall uh, with a team that could look quite different than the one that we've seen in the second half of this season. So their schedule finishes up in this way. Tomorrow night, they're in New York against the Rangers. I don't think anybody's expecting to beat the Rangers. Rangers are going to be really ornery too after that loss against the Islanders, and they're fighting for first overall in the National Hockey League. Then on Saturday, they're home against New Jersey. Your guess is as good as mine as to how that game's going to go because New Jersey and Philadelphia... Both teams that have found their way to lose winnable games this year. Both teams that have struggles on the blue line and in net. No idea what we're going to get there. And then the schedule ends on the Tuesday where they're at home against the Capitals. Well, the Capitals are desperate for a playoff spot. And they want to take that uh, at the expense of Philadelphia, the expense of Detroit, maybe Pittsburgh, whoever they have to. And so uh, there isn't really a, a game out of the out of these remaining three that I say, well, Philadelphia is clearly going to win it because they already lost those. They lost against Chicago. They lost both against Montreal. They lost against Columbus. And these are the losses that have just pulled them completely out as far as I'm concerned, even though they're only two points behind the Capitals currently. They're only one point behind the Penguins and the Wings. But the asterisk with that is simple. Uh, there's three games left for Philly. All of those other teams I mentioned have four games left. So they all have a game in hand on the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, March 10th, this team was two points above the playoff line. They now sit two points behind it. February 10th, they were six points above the playoff line. So they've had quite the swing. Uh, even though uh, a lot of the teams in the hunt for playoffs have been very up and down, uh, the Flyers, this downbeat here, this eight-game stretch, has really hurt their odds. So there's a possibility that this losing streak hits 10, and I'll be talking about them again on Sunday. But uh, if that happens, I'll just find a different way to look at it with the Flyers. And I'll probably find a little bit of a happier way to look at it. I, I do think that there is a reason to be excited about the future with what Danny Briere and John Tortorella are putting together. I think this team overachieved as well because of the style of hockey Tortorella had them playing. I think it just broke down. I think it's really hard to play that over an 82-game schedule. Plus, uh, the the teams get better as the season goes along. It gets harder and harder to win games. And Philadelphia just wasn't able to raise their their level. They, they reached a, a peak, and then the other teams keep getting better. And Philadelphia's just not been able to match up with those teams. Which makes sense against the, the teams with the asterisk, but the, the teams well below the playoff line. That's just them not playing as well as they should but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below so the question i have is a simple one if you're a flyers fan is this season going to be seen as discouraging or encouraging will you look at this and go well this is a team that that competed for a playoff spot and fell out but they weren't expected to be that good and there's a good future or do you look at this and go eh, there's a lot of mediocrity here call me when they get better but let me know your thoughts don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already thank you guys so much for all your support i will talk to you again soon